Good morning. I'm Pastor Steve Hodges, Mount Pleasant Presbyterian Church, and it is a special morning because it's just me here. It's a, a weather event has, has come along, and uh, my, uh, my uh, music director, Cindy Snyder, is uh, at home, safely at home where she needs to be, and uh, I, I could make it in and got it done, get it done, and then uh, I can be safe too. But today is, is uh, January 31st. It is just two weeks before we uh, have in-person uh, worship service here in this sanctuary. I'm probably as excited as anybody because I've, I haven't had a chance to do that since February of last year. So, but I'm looking forward to having you here. Uh, we ran a survey, and the survey's closed now, but we ran a survey, and we've got a good feeling that, that uh, somewhere uh, just under half of people will probably be here, which is fine, and we will have a worshipful service. We'll also live stream it for you who watch on YouTube, and uh, we'll continue that for quite a while because we found out that even if you're not going to be here on February 14th at 10 o'clock in the morning, you do watch our worship services here on YouTube, and that's wonderful. And so, therefore, it takes, as, as you may or may not know, it takes a lot of effort to get this recording onto or this live stream onto YouTube. And so we've been quite, um, we've, we've, it's been a steep learning curve, but we're there. And uh, we, I think we can continue to do it for, uh, for, the, for this year. And, and uh, hopefully, hopefully the attendance will be such that uh, live streaming might be um, not, not nearly as important. But I think, it's a, I think it's a change for the church. I said that, not, and I think, you know, I think there's a lot of churches that are saying, you know, we're going to be live streaming for a long time. And so, uh, you know, I think that I can see it spinning in the video. If you don't mind, I'm going to turn off that ceiling fan above me because, for one thing, it's, uh, it's in the 20s outside. I don't really need a ceiling fan blowing on me while I'm speaking to you. So pardon me. I'll be right back. There we go, folks. Switch is a little old. Didn't want to turn off the first time. So, but now I can talk without uh, chill on my back. So, but as I said, today is January 31st and we are, we begin with our call to worship. And is it's inspired by Psalm 111, which I do typically with our call to worship. I take the words out and make them appropriate for the moment. But here we go. The Lord be with you and also with you. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with all my, with my whole heart. I'll repeat that again. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of honor and majesty are God's works. God's righteousness endures forever. Let us worship God. Our next piece of our bulletin is the prayer of the day, and we... If we were together, we would read it aloud and in unison. I invite you to read along with me. And if you so are so moved, read it with me. Holy God, merciful and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love, we greet you with praise on our lips and thanksgiving in our hearts. You take pity upon us and shower us with your blessings, satisfying our every need and renewing our strength. You lift us above all earthly cares and grant us a vision of your internal salvation. We bow in reverence before you and rise to praise you. You are the God of new life. Amen. If Cindy was here, we would, we would hear the, the, the beautiful song, All Creatures of Our God and King. I think I might just read the words to you. All Creatures of Our God and King. Lift up your voice and with us sing, Alleluia. Thou burning sun and golden beam, thou silver moon with softer gleam, oh, praise him, oh, praise him. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Our next piece of our bulletin is we move to the prayer of confession, and I will have a call to confession 
and then we will have the prayer of confession and then the promise of God's forgiveness. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In humility and faith, let us confess our sins before God and our neighbor. O God of truth and justice, in Christ you have taught what it means to obey you. We glorify your name. You are the immovable rock of salvation, the stone upon which we build our faith. When our trials beset us, you offer safe haven. Amid tribulation, you remain a bulwark of strength. We shall dwell all our days atop your holy mountain and there offer, offer glad praises for the salvation you bring. Let us pause for a moment as we reflect upon those words. Hear the good news. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ, and Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Christ prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. And all God's children said, Amen. Our next piece of, I'm going to take a sip. Got a little tickle in my throat this, this morning. Oh, there we go. A little tea. Let's see here. Time with our children. There'll be a children's bulletin. In, it has been circulated to you, and um, it's one that you can share wherever you want. There is no copyright on it. And so, um, but... Um, that would be what we would uh, we would talk about children's time right at this moment. But now we're going to move off into on into the scripture readings, which I always begin with this with a prayer for illumination. God, our Helper, by your Holy Spirit, open our minds that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may be led into your truth and taught your will, for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This morning, I have three readings, three readings to share with you. One from Deuteronomy, one from Mark, and one from 1 Corinthians. Deuteronomy. Moses is about to die. The Israelites ask for a prophet to help them remain faithful. God promises to provide one from among their own kin. This prophet will speak on God's behalf. The people must listen. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 15 through 22. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your brothers. It is to him you shall listen, just as you desired of the Lord your God in Horeb on that day of the assembly when you said, let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God or see this great fire anymore lest I die. And the Lord said to me, they are right in what they have spoken. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brothers, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I command him. And whoever will not listen to my words that he shall speak in my name, I myself will require it of him. But the prophet who presumes to speak my, a word in my name that I have not commanded him to speak, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that that same prophet shall die. And if I say in your heart, how may we know the word that the Lord has not spoken? When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the word does not come to pass or come true, that is a word that the Lord has not spoken. So if it did not come true, the Lord did not speak it. The prophet has spoken it presumptuously. You need not be afraid of him. Next is our reading from Mark chapter 1, verses 21 through 28. Jesus teaches in Capernaum with uncommon authority. Suddenly a man possessed by a demon recognizes Jesus and cries out, asking if Jesus has come to destroy all demons. Jesus rebukes him and commands the demon to come out of the man. The people are amazed as a result. Jesus' reputation spreads. 
In the Jesus time, anyone who wished to be recognized as a rabbi, a teacher, went through a recognized process of training. He became a disciple of the rabbi, and from him learned the mass of oral traditions and interpretations which had grown up around the law. It was common for a rabbi to refer to the tradition, to discuss the notion of rabbi this and rabbi that. It was what the long dead had said that the living referred to when teaching. And then Jesus appeared. And when Jesus taught, he did not hedge his words by references to others. He spoke plainly, powerfully, as one who possessed his own authority. Hear these words of the gospel according to Mark. Mark 1, verses 21 through 28. And they went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath, Jesus entered the synagogue and was teaching. And they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one who had authority and not as scribes. And immediately there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, the man cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying out with a loud voice, came out of him, and they were amazed. So that, so that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this, a new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And at once his fame spread everywhere throughout all the surrounding region of Galilee. And next is our final reading, which will be also where I will preach from. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verses, verses 1 through 13. What is to be done with meat sacrificed to idols? idols? Eat it or not? Some arrogantly say, I know it means nothing at all if I eat it. But they offend weaker believers by eating God doesn't want our freedom to inhibit another person's devotion. God does not want our freedom to inhibit another person's devotion. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 through 13. Now concerning food offered by the two idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. The knowledge puffs up, and but love builds up. If anyone imagines that he knows something, he does not yet know as he ought to know. But if anyone loves God, he is known by God. Therefore, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that an idol has no real existence and that there is no God but one. For all there, although there may be so-called gods in heaven and on earth, as indeed there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, for whom all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things and through whom we exist. However, not all possess the knowledge, but some, through former associations with idols, eat food as really offered to an idol, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. Food will not command, excuse me, food will not commend us to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care that this right of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if anyone sees you who has, excuse me, if anyone sees you who have knowledge eating in an idol's temple, will he not be encouraged? If his conscience is weak to eat food offered to the idols, and so by your knowledge the weak person is destroyed, the brother for whom you, Christ died, thus Sinning against your brothers and wounding their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food makes my brother stumble, I will never eat meat, lest I make my brother stumble. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I would typically have a musical interlude at this time. I will simply get a sip of tea to kind of control this tickle in my throat. Okay. The 
The title today of the sermon is Be Careful. Be Careful. I have to be careful because I don't have that much room to move papers around. So, but be careful. And the question for the day is, are you someone's stumbling block? Are you someone's stumbling block? Be careful, the term. Seems like an appropriate sermon title for the snowy and frigid morning. I, pre, I, I it, 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 turning to Scripture and the letter to the Corinthians, today's title has been translated also, Take Care. And those of you who have received notes from me know that it's common for me to sign off with that on my notes. Take care. It seems like a fluffy statement. It seems like quite secular, but actually it's, um, it's got some scripture behind it because essentially that's what Paul was saying. Take care. Be careful. Our salvation through Christ gives us, Christ, gives us Christians a great freedom from the world, sets us free. And we, have, we carry no guilt. We move about with the Lord's acceptance. We can truly live without guilt. But can we live for ourselves? We have a responsibility to encourage our sisters and brothers in Christ who may not be where we are. They may be weak in faith. With all of our freedom from this world, we are not free to challenge their faith with our boldness. Sometimes we find that we have, and sadly, we can find ourselves passing the buck. Almost everyone is aware of the statement attributed to President Harry Truman. Harry Truman, that the buck stops here. But does it? There are people who will not accept responsibility for their own actions, including in this group are criminals and sociopaths. The war trials at Nuremberg brought out this idea. The Nazis, the Nazi war criminals, claimed they were just following orders. We really did not want to exterminate the Jews. Hitler made us do it. The criminal says, I am a product of society. They are to blame, not me. The child abuser says, I was raised by abusive parents, so don't blame me, blame them. The denial of guilt does not remove or negate the responsibility of being accountable. In our society today, we're just as sick as they were back then, all the way into the scripture all the way into Bible times. No one wants to accept responsibility for anything. No one wants to accept responsibility for anything these days. Everything is relative, so do what you want to do, as it has said. Well, well, friends and neighbors, that's just junk. That's junk. It isn't so. Of course, anyone can play the game of denial, it all started long ago, as I said, back in Bible times. Genesis 3, verses 1 through 19. It tells us that Adam ate the forbidden fruit, and God held him responsible. Adam said, I'm not responsible. You know the woman gave me the apple. Remember her? She gave me fruit from the tree, and I did eat it. But do not blame me. You gave her to me. So blame her and not me. Passing the buck can happen when we do not want to accept our Christian responsibility. We are not to be the stumbling block for our neighbor. Are you someone's stumbling block? Have you been someone's stumbling block? I am sure that I have been someone's stumbling block, I, and I own it because I accept it own it, and I can bend to begin to do something about it. In quotations, beware of the danger of allowing your rights to subordinate your responsibilities. In other words, don't let your freedom, don't let your freedom overshadow your, account, your responsibilities. 
And I begin to reflect upon those areas of my life that may seem to give me rights. Being a pastor is a huge responsibility. Paul gave, gave so many appropriate warnings for pastors. You know, when he was teaching Timothy, it's a great read if you want to know. If you're a leader of the church, if you want to be a leader of the church, it's a great place to go, Timothy, to get, get an idea of our responsibility. In today's passage, Paul was responding to the church leaders who were, or the church, or, or people in general, who were eating the surplus meat from idol sacrifices. Nothing wrong with that, as Paul spells it out. Unless you're in the company of those who are weak in faith. And in this case, you're in the company of those who were at the um, altar, the sacrificial altar. And they may have been Christians. They may have been people who were struggling with, who do I follow? Do I follow, in this case, it was probably Baal, but uh, follow Baal, or do I follow God and Jesus? You know, and, they're, and then they see, they see the Christians come out, come out and eat the meat, and then they're like, they're, if anything, they're confused. And so, but it becomes a stumbling block. So this is scripturally acceptable. That behavior of eating food, whatever. Remember, Paul said it, it, it's, it's, not, it's not good or bad. It's just, it's just food. But a stumbling block for those who are weak in faith, as I've repeated a couple of times by now. Words that can haunt a pastor. Words that can haunt a pastor. I don't know how many pastors are listening. Words that can haunt a pastor. Just saying this. Well, Pastor Steve did it, or Pastor whoever did it. That will haunt, haunt a pastor for the rest of his career. Pastor Steve did it. I, who knows what it might be, but that is creating a stumbling block for people who may be weaker in faith. The facts of that accusation are not nearly as damning. So I hope you have never found yourself in any such situation. But if you have, there is good news. There is good news. Jesus taught in a sermon, his sermon on the, on the plains, do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. The best way to correct such a situation is to, to accept that you've been a stumbling block, and then resist judging and condemning the next person who may do the same to you. Have you been a stumbling block to anyone Perhaps, but the good news is, acknowledge what you've been and do something about it. Let us pray. Lord, you've given us such a, uh, such a, such a challenging, challenging uh, expectation for us to be so, oh, so careful as it could, because we're being watched. We are a light upon the hill. We are people who, who stand out. Uh, because of our uh, conduct, our behavior. Lord, as we just may, and just the, the living of his life, been a stumbling block for somebody. Lord, help us to recognize it. Help us to acknowledge it. And help us to, to do better. Set that example. But Lord, in the end, it is good news that you do forgive. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen indeed. Let me do a little bit of housekeeping here. And uh, then we'll be... Okay. There we go. Okay. So. See, when, when Cindy's here, she, while she's playing the music, I'm arranging the papers. So, but with that, there is a song, hymn, that uh, I had picked out for the hymn of response, Be Thou My Vision. And that's very much a, 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 a thought for the message today, is be thou my vision, Lord, Lord, help me to see. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart, not be all else to me, save that thou art. Thou my mess, best thought by day or by night, waking or sleeping, thy presence my light. And then the last line, High King of heaven, my victory won. May I reach heaven's joy, bright heaven's sun. Heart of my own heart, whatever befall, still be my vision, O ruler of all. Now, as we move past that, 
we go, we turn to the Apostles' Creed. And the Apostles' Creed is one that I, 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 may, I uh, bring to you every time. And simply is a reminder of uh, one of the, one of the uh, confessions, creeds and confessions of the church. And very important one. Christians, what do we believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen indeed. Our next portion of our bulletin is to, to stop for the cares and concerns, uh, thanksgivings of the, of the church, prayers of the church family. And there'll be a silent portion, and then I'll end with the Lord's Prayer. This time I um, was moved by a verse out of the Mark reading this morning, and I thought that I would pray from that passage. So with that, let us pray. Mark 1, 27. And they were all amazed, so that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. Lord Jesus, as the passage reflects, the content was not as important as the way you presented the message. With authority, Scripture describes their response as amazed. Others have translated their response as skeptical. So he speaks with authority. We can respond to your word with skepticism, wondering if your word is even applicable for today, whether the word is to, you know, to um, listen to Jesus' teaching or whether it's to, you know, to uh, avoid, try to avoid being a stumbling block for someone. By your Holy Spirit, by your word, as, and your word is as powerful as when it was first uttered into the synagogues, into homes, and the streets. We can be as astonished today as they were yesterday. Help us, Lord, in our skepticism. Move us by your word and by your Holy Spirit. Write your word upon our hearts. Let us pause for a moment of silence as we lift up our own prayers to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Now let us boldly pray as children of God the words the Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen, indeed. Our next is to acknowledge the offerings, the stewardship that takes place in this church still. It is, it is, has been greatly reduced over the pandemic, and we hope that you um, can be so moved by the Holy Spirit to uh, return in person and also in support of your church. But with that, I'll lift up these words this morning and then call for and pray for a blessing of your stewardship. As Paul wrote to the church in Corinth, give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Let us pray. Lord, indeed, you do love a cheerful giver. You want us to be willing in our giving as opposed to giving because no one else will or giving because we feel pressured or guilted into it. You want us to do it willingly. Lord, it's my prayer that that does happen. And it's my prayer that no one guilts anyone around here to, uh, to give. But Lord, may it be given willingly. And I pray that you take these gifts and use them to amplify your 
your kingdom in this world, Lord, that we may, you may overcome the times that we were a stumbling block, but also you may remind us that we are forgiven and release us from the guilt of a misstep. Lord, we pray this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, there's a hymn of sending. And I'll read the first verse of the hymn of sending. And we will, I'll send you off into your day. With that, guide me, O oh, thou great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land. I am weak, but thou art mighty. Hold me with thy powerful hand. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Feed me till I want no more. It's time to close this service. And I lift up and say, go in peace, my friends, to love and serve the Lord. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And all God's children said, amen. I pray for your safety and your health this day. It's a snowy day, and I pray that you are safe and sound in your warm shelter. Until we see each other again, bless you.